ahead of the Mets, four to one. And then later on, he makes an outstanding catch on a foul ball over near the Chicago Cub dugout. Watch this. Lions lifts it high in the air. And look at that. Look at Zimmer. Letting the umpire know he caught it. Here are the standings as a result. The Cardinals trailing Montreal at the moment in the fourth inning, two to nothing, or a game and a half out. Montreal four, and the Mets four and a half. Stay with us now for thrilling Cubs baseball as they try to sweep the series from the Mets. I mean, this is Harry Carey with Steve Stone. We're at Shea Stadium in New York where the Cubs will try to make it two in a row over the Mets after a thrilling victory last night. Jeff Pico is going to the mound, and he's a surprise starter. You know that Don Zimmer used Les Lancaster last night, so the chores fall to Pico tonight, and he's going to oppose Sid Fernandez, who's 10-3 and three this year, but 6-0 and oh, lifetime against the Cubs. Right now, the St. Louis Cardinals are trailing Montreal 2 to nothing in the bottom of the fourth. We'll keep you posted on that. Stay with us now. We'll be back with the lineups in a moment. Hello again, everybody. With Dwayne Stats and Steve Stone, this is Harry Carey at Chase Stadium. We're ready for the lineups for tonight's game. For the Cubs, Jerome Walton in center, Sandberg at second, Grace at first, Dawson in right, McLendon in left, Salazar at third, Dunstan the shortstop, Rona catching, and Jeff Pico with one, two, and lost one will be the pitcher. For the Mets, who were beaten last night by the Cubs, Jeffries leads off at second, Samuel in center, Johnson at third, Strawberry in right, McReynolds in left, Hernandez at first, Gary Carter catching, Elster the shortstop, and Sid Fernandez, who's 110 and lost three, will be the pitcher. The umpires are Charlie Williams one behind the plate. John McSherry at first, Joe West at second, Jerry Crawford at third, and we're all set to play baseball. Sid Fernandez, a fireballer who's averaged eight strikeouts per nine innings, and the Cubs have never beaten him. 6-0 and lifetime against Chicago. There's a first pitch in there, a strike ball. Montreal leads St. Louis 2-1 to one in the top of the sixth at St. Louis. It's an unusual starting time. There's a high pop fly. That'll be an easy out. Jeffries is there, and he has it. Walton popped out to Jeffries. You know, Fernandez struck out 16 men in a game this year. That's the most that any left-handed pitcher has ever fanned in a game for the Mets. He broke the record held by Jerry Kuzman. You know all about him and his greatness. In fact, he was inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame earlier this year. Fernandez has the capabilities of being that type of pitcher, but he's had a hard time harnessing his control the last few years. One man out, nobody on. Here's Sandberg, who hit a homer in this situation last night with one out. He homered over the left field wall. Fernandez has given up 19 of them this year, and that leads the staff in that department. There's a drive and a left field way right back. It's going to be, well, oh, what a catch. What a catch by Kevin McGrenel. Holy cow, what a catch he just made. Fernandez throws a lot of high fastballs, and consequently, he gives up a lot of shots. And Kevin McReynolds, who has struggled at times this year, goes back to the wall at the 358 foot sign and hauls it in. This ball is almost out of the ballpark, but keep your eye on McReynolds. He times his leap perfectly, and he makes the catch at the top of his leap. That robbed him of a home run. As you can see, the ball was higher than the fence. He brought it back in. Two out. Here's Mark Grace. Had a two-run triple last night in the ninth inning. He gave the Cubs the insurance they needed. One strike to nothing. Two out, nobody on. Grace hitting 317. 13 homers, 69 RBI. Leads in that department. There's a curveball. A ball and a strike. 
National League hitters hitting only 203 against Sid Fernandez. That's second in the league behind Jose De Leon. He's 10th in strikeouts. Got 150 of them. A big left hander fire. Pitches foul back. Fernandez is only 26 years old. 6'1, 220 pounds. There's Montreal out in front of St. Louis in the sixth. There's a high fly ball will be caught by McReynolds. One, two, three. We go to the bottom of the first snow score. Harry Carey back at Chase Stadium, Jeff Pico. Limbering up on the mound, and Greg Jeffries, who had a couple of hits last night, will lead it off for the Mets. There you look at the defense and how they'll line up behind Jeff Pico, who's making his fifth start of the year. He won his first start against Atlanta, lost his next one against L.A. Got two no decisions against Pittsburgh and Philadelphia, two games the Cubs lost. But he's coming off two very good relief appearances against Atlanta. He threw two and a third innings in one of them, two and two thirds in the other. Didn't give up any runs, and that probably is a motivation behind Don Zimmer starting Pico. Apparently, he's going with the hottest hand he figures he's got out of the bullpen. Greg Jeffries hitting 245. 16 out of 56 against the Cubs pitcher. Fastball a little bit outside. Mr. and Mrs. Eberly, Pete Eberly's parents, pulling for the Cubs tonight. Jeff has thrown five times against the Mets this year, a 159 ERA in those games. There's a drive in the right field like a bullet. A base hit. Jeffrey's really cream that one. A hard line drive to right. Jeffries has come alive in the leadoff spot. This man was down in the order for most of this year. Not hitting anything, but as soon as he's been elevated to the leadoff spot, he's more selective, swinging at strikes, and he's become a much better hitter. Our cameraman, Jimmy, with greetings to Evelyn and Rick Powell in Hummers and Iris Bialik in Addison. We throw runner back. Gus Vanderheide is here from Carroll Stream, Illinois. Jeffries can run. He's got 15 stolen bases, been caught six times. Samuel, very fast himself. There's a high pop fly. Rick Rona coming over, but it's out of play into the stand. The Cardinals batting in the bottom of the sixth, Montreal leading two to one. That's Perez for Montreal and Hill for the Cardinals. Look at the road record of the Cubs and realize just how well they've done away from Chicago. But they've got their work cut out for them tonight. Don Zimmer came up with the unexpected. Everybody thought it was going to be Steve Wilson. But Jeff Pico goes to the mound with a very tough assignment. One strike to nothing. Throw over the first runner back. Well, some Cub fans and Bud men. Jim Zimmerman and Leslie Dover here from Chicago. Again, he throws over there. Samuel very fast. And so is Greg Jeffries. Indiana. Samuel spanned 95 times this year, and he does it mostly on the breaking ball, especially out of the strike zone. He's always been a dead fastball hitter. The breaking ball has always given him problems. And all things being equal, you don't want to try to slip the fastball by him on the inner half. There goes Jeffries. Base hit down the left field line. Here's Jeffries racing the third. But nobody's covering second base. A double for Samuel, and it hasn't taken Pico on to be in trouble. A single to right like a bullet, a double to left like a bullet. 
In Pico's four previous starts, his ERA is 595, so he hasn't been very effective in this role. That was a hanging breaking ball that Samuel roped for his 13th double of the year, and now Pico in trouble after the first two hitters. Jan and the hot beat Cal, Cal Schabrenner from Chicago here. And a bunch of guys. Grunke, Peters, Hussman, Stevens, and Zimmerman. Hope he knew. See the Cubs win again. And here is Howard Johnson. 32 homers, 85 runs batted in. Runners in second and third. Fastball is low. Cardinals batting the bottom of the sixth. Montreal leads two to one. The Mets have runners at second and third and nobody out in the bottom of the first with no score. A little bit low, ball two. Now you've got to come to a dead fastball hitter with a hittable pitch. You've fallen behind him. Becomes a very tough pitch for Jeff Pico because he doesn't have a good fastball. He lives and dies on a sinker. And he'll have to try to keep it away from Johnson. Two balls, no strikes. Johnson, a fine hitter. Outstanding third baseman. There's a high pop fly. Dunstan's going to catch this ball. He makes the catch. And comes running back towards the infield. One out. The runners are still at second and third. A couple of contest winners on WGN Radio. Jerry and Joan Brode. Watching the ball game here. They're from Lyle, Illinois. I got to believe they've got to walk Daryl Strawberry in this situation. Take their chance with McReynolds, who tried and failed in similar situations last night. But Strawberry is a man that Don Zimmer usually pitches around, and it looks like they're going to do it again here. They're going to walk him. Now McReynolds hit the ball very hard last night, but he hit it in tough luck. He'll be coming up with the bases loaded. One out. McReynolds is a pretty good base stealer. But he is not lightning fast. Average speed. If you can get him to hit the ball on the ground, might get out of the inning. McReynolds came up with eight base runners on last night, was only able to score one of them. And let's hope that that continues tonight for Jeff Pico. No balls, no strikes. One out, bases loaded. Kevin McReynolds hitting 272, 18 homers, 72 runs batted in. He's grounded into seven double plays this year in the infield straight away. Right around halfway looking for two. He's hit three homers against the Cubs pitching so far this year. Fastball outside. One ball, no strikes. The last time Jeff Pico walked a man intentionally was down in Houston. And then he walked the next man unintentionally, and the winning run was forced in. Two balls, no strikes. Dangerous hitter, Kevin McReynolds. There's a strike call. That's where he wants to throw the ball, about knee high. Montreal still leading two to one in the top of the seventh at St. Louis. Nico's probably going to go with the slider. And if it's away, he hopes to catch McReynolds trying to pull it and get that ground ball to the left side. Ball. 
Graywald and the strike. Keith Hernandez would be next. <laughs> the pit. There's a high fly ball in the short center field. It's going to be caught. The Rays of man, a good throw, get him at the plate. Save! Oh, boy, I thought they had him. It took Walton some time to get that throw off. I don't think Jerome Walton thought the man was going to go. We'll take another look at it, and you'll see Jerome Walton taking about two or three extra steps when he catches this ball. He doesn't get a great break on it. Now watch. Now, how, look on, how many steps he it. takes. He does not get the ball off in time. Don Zimmer thought that Rona blocked the plate. He did, but apparently, Charlie Williams said he got enough of the plate. They're going to appeal now. They think that Jeffries left too soon at third base. Now, let's see. Five steps by Walton before he got this throw off. Keith. Boy, a daring bit of base running by Jeffries because the ball was very shallow in short center. Now, Salazar is standing at third base. They say he did tag up. He held the, the bag long enough. One to nothing in favor of the Mets. Goes oh. to RBI number 73 for Kevin McReynolds. And good base running, but a bit of a mental mistake by Jerome Walton. You think he forgot about the guy on third or what? Harry, I don't think he believed that Jeffries was going to go. I think he felt maybe he was bluffing, but he kept on coming, and it took Walton a long time to deliver the ball. There's a strike call. Well, I tell you, Jeff Pico deserved a, a better fate than that. He should have been out of the inning. But now the Mets lead one to nothing. And another dangerous hitter's up there. Hernandez. Since he was activated in the middle of July, he has been anything but dangerous. He's really struggled with a bat, hitting down in the 100s. But he usually comes alive in September. Curveball inside. The Becks are here from Rockford, Illinois. And Cyril and Lori Radwin on their honeymoon are here. Dave Johnson said he wants Hernandez in there every day because he's got a young second baseman and he wants Hernandez to talk to Jeffries about where to play. He also loves his glove and he knows he is used to pen and pressure. Bouncing ball ought to be out of the inning. Oh, he fumbled the ball. An air on great. The bases are loaded. An air on Mark Grace. You don't see this often. Mark Grace, for only the sixth time this year, has committed an error. It looked like Jeff Pico was out of the inning on the breaking ball, but Grace comes over, and he can't make the play. So the inning stays alive. Pico should be on the bench with no run scored. Here now is Gary Carter with the bases loaded. He's hitting only 174. One homer, seven RBI. That one home run was hit against the Cubs. Fung and he missed. Strike one. Cutter hitting 458 his last nine games. And like Hernandez, he's come off the disabled list, not swinging the bat particularly well, except for the last nine games when he seems to be coming alive in almost a pennant push for himself. He does not have a contract next year. It's iffy if he'll get one. He's trying to show the Mets that he's got some life. 0-1 oh, the count. A little bit high inside. That evens it up. The bases are loaded. The inning long a time ago should have been over with the Mets not scoring at all. Instead, they have a run in. The bases loaded, two out. Baseline. 
One ball, two strikes. Here's another case where Jeff Pico has got to start getting a little more on that slider. He's hung a couple of them that time out over the plate to Carter. And he wants to make sure when he throws it, he keeps it away and down to these dangerous right-hand hitters. Boy, it's amazing that Jeffries would attempt to score on that little pop fly to Jerome Walton. He just, he just took a chance and he made it because Walton didn't expect him to go either. A little bit outside. Two balls, two strikes. Boy, I'd like to see Pico get out of this inning. He doesn't deserve to be in the jam he's in. Two balls, two strikes. There's a ground ball. Let's see to the hit off his leg. leg. Yeah, fouled off his leg. And a roll down the third baseline in fair territory, but it already hit Carter while he was in a batter's box in foul territory. The scenario in St. Louis is a little dismal as far as Todd Worrell is concerned. He's the ace reliever of the Cardinals. And they're going to send him to Los Angeles to talk with Dr. Joe. Dr. London of the Cardinals said it's either torn, in which case he's lost for the year. If it's partially torn, he will not be able to pitch at all. He won't have to have surgery, however. If it's just muscular, then he'll be gone for at least two weeks. And they will find out in the next couple of days. Whatever the case, they will lose their A short reliever for at least two weeks, regardless of what the prognosis is. Two balls, two strikes. The delivery, here it is. A high pop foul coming back and out of play. Mary and John Laspisa from Des Plaines are here, and they're here from Chattanooga. Tennessee, Marty Lowry. They flash up on the board. How about some noise? Programmed enthusiasm even in New York. Two balls, two strikes. One to nothing in favor of the Mets. Bases loaded. The pitch. Ball three. Three and two. The runners on will be going now. Two out, three balls, two strikes. The old merry-go-round pitch. Short. The throw of the first race in time to retire the side. Dunson throws out Gary Carter. Only one run out all that. At the end of one, the Mets lead one to nothing. Harry Carey back at Shea Stadium. Boy, oh boy, seven men batted for the Mets in the first. They left the bases loaded again. That's a fourth time in these last two nights they've left the bases loaded. They stranded them a couple of times last night. The inability of Kevin McReynolds to get the big hit these last two nights has really done in the Mets. And Jeff Pico did a good job of getting out of that inning that the defense really put him in. So he's wasted some extra pitches. You don't know about his endurance coming out of the bullpen. So Don Zimmer and Dick Pohl will keep a close eye on him. Hey, Montreal 6, St. Louis 1 in the 7th. Swung in the middle. Last two and a half weeks, Andre Dawson has been a hot hitter for the Cubs, hitting 361 with 20 RBIs over that period. And there's a sight that all Cubs fans love to see, that five-run Montreal lead. The pitch. There's a slow curve in there. Wendy Hirsch. Out of Bristol, Illinois, celebrating a birthday here at the ballpark. Sid throws a lot of fly balls because of that high fastball, but he's got a decent enough curve and usually uses it like a changeup. He struck him out. Dawson goes down swinging. Four in a row retired by Sid Fernandez. He's out of Hawaii. 
He's really got to lay off the high fastball from Fernandez because he throws it about 91, 92 miles an hour. You never seem to catch up with it. And he throws a lot of them just above the letters. It's too high to hit. We have a lot of hitters having trouble laying off. Tim Wallach hit a grand slam in the seventh inning to give the Expos that six to one lead. Let's pause here for identification. This is WGN Television, Channel 9 in Chicago. One man out, Lloyd McClendon, the hitter, 0 and 1 the count. That evens it up, a ball and a strike. The Dodgers developed Sid Fernandez, and then they traded him along with Ross Jones for Carlos Diaz and Bob Baylor December 8th of 1985. You have to wonder if they ever regret that deal. 1-1 one, one pitch. Long and a fastball that he missed. Anita Quiet with parents Gene and Bob Lee in Indianapolis here watching the game. And Roy Schneider and Luann Chappell from Monticello, Indiana are here. A high pop foul back. That conference record you were looking at, which is the best in the East against conference rivals, translates into only one ball club in the East with a winning record against the Cubs, and that's Montreal. Since 1987, only the Giants and Cubs have winning records against the Mets. He fouled it off again. A grand slam by Tim Wally and Jim Montreal a six to one lead at St. Louis in the bottom of the seventh. <laughs> you know, the Cubs have 24 games to go after tonight's game. And their magic number is 24. So if they win them all, nobody can touch them. One ball, two strikes. There's a high pop foul back. One ball, two strikes. Sid Fernandez has been a red-hot pitcher of late. He's allowed just one earned run or less in eight of his last 14 starts and allowed more than three earned runs just once in his last 19 starts. So Jeff Pico can't let him get away. One ball, two strikes. The Cubs hold the edge over the Mets this year, nine games to six. He fouls it back. Good swing in there by Lloyd McLendon. Mel, Linda, Nathan Bauer from Sterling, Illinois. Watching the ball game here. Chase Stadium in New York. One ball, two strikes, one out. Two and two. Luis Salazar is next. They've got Sid listed at 6'1", 230 pounds, and he's battled a weight problem his whole career. Generally has a tendency to put on a few pounds during the course of the year, but it certainly hasn't affected his fastball. Two, two. Tap right back to the round. He pulled him. Two. Five in a row retired by Sid Fernandez. Here's Luis Salazar hitting 272 with eight homers. 24 runs batted in. He's hit well against the Mets all year. 11 out of 35 with two home runs. One to nothing in favor of the Mets. Fastball outside. Fernandez won and all against the Cubs this year. He beat Greg Maddox three to one April the 22nd here at Chase. 
There's a high pump foul coming back and out of play. Then he had a no decision in a 4-3 to 12 inning Mets victory June 15th at Shea. He only pitched five innings, allowed three hits. Sits two and a half to one strikeout over walk ratio and for a man who throws the ball as hard as he does it's surprising his control has been that good. But he's only walked 64 men in 176 innings and that's not too bad. Look at low. San Lazar two balls and the strike. Remember when the Cubs were trailing nine to nothing and came back and beat the Phillies? Remember Don Zimmer took out Dawson, put in Dwight Smith. He figured he was going to lose a game. He was behind nine to nothing. Fouled it back. Well, yesterday, Roger Craig of the Giants cleared the bench. When his first teamers fell behind, eight to nothing in Cincinnati. Mike Lager, the journeyman, sent in to give first base for Will Clark a rest. And his Giants debut memorable with a two-run homer in the eighth. And then he hit the game-winning RBI single in the ninth. The Giants winning in 98. There's a bullet of a base hit. Salazar line. A hard single to center. Here's Sean Dunson. Sean had some problems yesterday with the breaking ball of David Cohn, but a lot of people have problems with that. Sean was swinging a lot of high fastballs from Dave Cohn, and he won't be able to do that with Sid Fernandez. So Fernandez retired five men in a row before Salazar singled sharply to center field. There's a high fly ball would be an easy out. The center fielder is there, Samuel, to retire the side. We go in the bottom of the second one to nothing in favor of the Mets. Harry Carey back at Chase Stadium. Here's Kevin Elster, the shortstop, leaving it off. Elster was down right around the 200 mark, and then something happened to turn his hitting around. He hit very well at the beginning of the year, then went into a prodigious slump. But Bill Robinson's been working with him, and now he's been hitting the ball like they thought he could, hitting close to 300 the past month and a half. There's a strike call. Jim Butkus from Waukesha, Wisconsin. On hand here at Chase Stadium. 0-1 the count. He bunts foul. He's in a hole on two. Montreal leading out St. Louis. Six to one in the top of the eighth. That's David Cohn. David Cohn. The man who went 20 and three last year. Saw his record slip to 12 and seven last night. And Dave Johnson before the game just marvels at the young man's stuff. Trying to convince him that he's only in his second year to calm down. He's going to be a great pitcher one day. Sometimes you go through tough periods, and he had one in the middle of this year. 0-2 the count. Kevin Elster. A little bit low and outside. Well, I'm wondering now. It's uh, in St. Louis. It's 12 after 7. Their game is in the eighth inning. That means that they must have started that game around 5 o'clock. There's a ground ball. Salazar throws the first one away. Seems like an unusual starting time for a single game. I think what was on the mind of the Cardinals, Harry, in planning ahead, they probably felt they'd be in the race. They've got to come into New York tonight. They knew they had lost an hour, and they wanted to get an early start on it because they'll be coming in here to play the Mets two games after the Cub leave, and they probably figured they'd be big ones. And they are. Yeah. The Cubs, meanwhile, will be in Philadelphia. Mike Vilecki tomorrow against uh, Ken Howell. 
Here's Fernandez, a good hitting pitcher. High drive should be caught. Walton is there, and he has it. Fernandez, flat out to Walton. Two gone. Dave Johnson said the best thing he did for Greg Jeffries this year was sit him on the bench for two weeks. He was pressing. A lot of pressure on the young man that everybody thought would be rookie of the year. He was hitting down around 210 and nobody could figure it out. But he played Tim Tuffle for a couple of weeks. Everything went well as far as the Mets were concerned. Reinserted Jeffries at the top of the order and he's hit the ball pretty well. Two men are out. is outside. After tonight, the Cubs will have only 13, well, only 11 games on the road. There's a ground ball. Jeffrey's going to be retired this time. One, two, three. At the end of two, one to nothing Mets. Steve Stone back at Chase Stadium. Here's Rick Rona to lead it off. He's hitting 245, one homer, nine RBIs. Got a important two run single last night. Won a game in Atlanta with a three run homer. And all in all, the young man from Tulsa is doing a great job in the absence of Damon Berryhill. Fourth start in a row for Rick Rona, so he's getting a lot of playing time. Swings and he fouls it back. Cardinals batting in the bottom of the eighth. Montreal leading six to one. Four of those runs came on Tim Walling's grand slam. Strike and nothing. Inside. Rona said he was the most surprised man in the world when he got the call to come back to the major leagues. He was just hoping, and he didn't know for sure that the Cubs would recall him on September 1st. But when Damon Berryhill went down, the call came for Rona. And he's made the most of this unexpected opportunity. Ball low and inside. Two balls and the strike. We're in the top of the third, one to nothing in favor of the Mets. And Montreal is beating St. Louis six to one in the bottom of the eighth. He had a cut. Two balls, two strikes. Rick Rona. Will be followed by Jeff Pico. Mets pitching staff has given up the fewest hits in the league, and they also have struck out the most hitters. But they're just fourth in the National League in pitching behind Los Angeles, San Francisco, and St. Louis. Had a good swing again, but fouled it back. Two balls, two strikes. One to nothing in favor of the Mets. Davey Johnson said he's most unhappy with the control of his entire pitching staff. He says that this team has just walked too many guys. It was illustrated last night with Randy Myers coming into the game, giving up a couple of walks that turned into two Cub runs and put the game away. There's a high pop fly. Jeffrey's backing out. Makes a catch. Rona pops to Jeffrey. One away. There is Doc Gooden in the center. The pitcher, Jeff Pico. Ojeda's on the left. And Musselman, the left-handed pitcher's on the right. Dwight Gooden will pitch a simulated game tomorrow. And they figure that he might be ready to pick up a couple innings out of the bullpen within the next week. And that would be a big lift to this team. The Mets don't know to this point if he'll be able to start before the end of the year, but so far he's thrown with no pain at all, and he's got pretty good velocity. One out. The pitch to Pico. Fastball inside. Pico as a hitter has had one out of eight. 
a, a single. One ball, no strike. There's a strike call. Jerome Alton will be next. Gary Carter only catches a couple of games a week. Barry Lyons gets the majority of the catching duties. Carter's still nursing a sore knee. Ball high. The Cubs will be home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Cardinals. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday against Montreal. A couple of the Montreal games, I think, are night games. Two balls, two strikes. Tuesday and Wednesday night are under the lights. 6.30 starting time for those night games next week. What a big series against the Cardinals Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Wrigley Field. Oh, outside. All three. Three balls, two strikes. One out. Pico getting set. Struck him out. And that's a second strikeout for Fernandez. Bolton might try to lay one down because you have a man on the mound who's not very agile. And generally, left-handers fall off the mound to the third base side. With that in mind, Keith Hernandez, who doesn't miss much in the infield, playing very close at first. And so is Hojo Johnson, the third baseman, playing very shallow. Strike call. Walton had one hit last night, fanned three times. Scored a run. So curl of beauty. 0 oh and 2 of the count. Don't discount the two strike butt because now Johnson and Hernandez have both moved way back to the corners. 0 oh and 2 of the count. Line drive to the shortstop for the out. Walton looped the liner to the shortstop Elster. We go to the bottom of the third, one to nothing met. Harry Carey back at Shea Stadium. Here's Juan Samuel, the center fielder leading it off. He doubled to left in the first to set up their first run. There's a strike call over the outside corner. In the ninth, Montreal leading St. Louis six to one. Samuel has had trouble adjusting to center field, but Dave Johnson thinks you got to give him some time. This is his first shot at it. There's a curveball. He swings and misses. Samuel with 30 stolen bases for the year. Oh, and to the count. Ground ball, that ought to be easy. Sandberg has it over the first in time. You know, Montreal lost at St. Louis last night. The Cubs beat the Mets here in New York. Montreal is winning at St. Louis six to one. The Cubs are sure not to lose any ground in the race to the team immediately behind them, St. Louis, and have a chance to gain a full game on the Cardinals, depending on whether they can win this game or not. If they can win it, they will gain a game and will have gained two over New York in the last two nights and one on Montreal. Howard Johnson, a high pump fly. Dunstan calling for it, makes the cut. And even should the Cubs break even. They'll be 
exactly where they were two nights ago, but the big difference is two more games will be off the schedule. And they'll still be leading by a game and a half with two less to play. And no more trips to New York. We don't have to listen to these planes anymore. So there are a lot of bright things that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, no strike. High pop foul. Daryl Strawberry was intentionally passed in the first. It should have worked out perfectly because Kevin McReynolds hit a pop fly in short center. Jeffrey, surprisingly, with two out, broke for the plate. Wall, quite obviously, was amazed. He took five steps before he threw the ball, and Jeffries was safe. That's how they got the run. Strike three call. One, two, three. Brian of adjoining Stephen, a moment of Harry Carey from Chase Stadium. We're at the end of three. The Mets lead one to nothing. From Shea Stadium, we move into the fourth inning with Steve Stone and our producer director Artie Harris. Dwayne Stats with you. A one nothing ball game on that fly ball to short center off the bat of Kevin McReynolds. So we go into the fourth facing the left hander Sid Fernandez. Fernandez throwing the ball exceptionally well and Jeff Pico has settled down. He got off to a rocky start but right now he's getting the Mets out and holding him close because Fernandez does not complete a lot of games. Ryan Sandberg who made a bid for a first inning home run only to have McReynolds make a leaping catch out there and left will open the fourth inning. Mark Carrion, by the way, is now in the ball game in left for the New York Mets. I think McReynolds hurt his wrist leaping against the wall. He was rubbing it, and now Carrion comes into the game, and he's been a premier pinch hitter for the Mets this year. A ball, no strikes the count. Count goes to one and one. The Cubs have one hit so far, a two-out single, a line single into center by Luis Salazar. That came in the second inning. Frank Viola taking this one in. He will go against the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals come in with a makeshift starting rotation of Horton and Ted Power against the Mets. The 1-1. Pop fly short center. Samuel coming in. Elster's out from short. Elster makes the catch. We'll take a look at that catch by McReynolds back in the first inning. Mark Chris. That's a medium. Kevin McReynolds reportedly began when he suffered a bruise. Yep. A bruise left wrist is the official announcement, and you can see where he injured himself right on the edge of the fence out there and left. So McReynolds is out of there. Mark Grace sends a high fly ball deep to left center. Carry on back in front of the track and makes the catch. So Grace hit the ball a long way to left center, but not deep enough. I think the Cubs are very happy they're not facing Mark Carry on in a pinch hitting role. He's nine for 25 this year with three home runs as a pinch hitter. But he comes into the game in this case as a defensive replacement. And Andre Dawson's going to be the hitter. Sid Fernandez, 10 and 3 on the year. The opposition is hitting only 203 against him. That's the second best mark in the National League. The pitch is foul out of play. Fernandez has only completed three games of his 26 starts. So generally when he goes out there, Dave Johnson watches him very carefully. He'll have a tendency to start out very hot as we get into the sixth, seventh inning, and many times he loses it. Fernandez, six and five lifetime against the Cubs. One and all this year. strike down around the knees and he's quickly in front of Dawson. He uses that breaking ball as a changeup. His fastball is so good that you have to give the hitter a different look. He does not throw a straight change. He hasn't been able to master it. That's why he uses a slow curve and he throws that pretty well. 
Base is empty, two outs. Hernandez out there for the 27th time this year in a starting role. He has made three relief appearances. Three complete games, one shutout, then coming over St. Louis. And a foul ball out of play, holding the count at nothing and two. Dave Johnson has already said if they do, by some chance, get into the playoffs, Sid Fernandez is going to be the odd man out. Cardinals batting for the last time. Bottom of the ninth. Montreal leading six to one. Four of those came on a grand slam by Tim Waller. There's a ball. The Mets have done what the Cubs did in terms of potential postseason rosters. They've dropped the pitching staff to nine men. They added Tom O'Malley, who would qualify should they get that far. Dawson trying to wait and time the pitch stays alive with a foul ball. I believe O'Malley was the MVP at AAA this year and he's been around. The Cubs remember him with San Francisco, a talented third baseman who had a bad knee and eventually had to leave San Francisco. They saw him briefly at Montreal. And now he's back with the Mets. One to the count. Dawson out on strikes for the second time tonight. One, two, three, go the Cubs. Bottom of the fourth coming, one nothing, New York. Bottom of the fourth, one nothing, New York out in front. Daryl Strawberry in the New York dugout. Davy Johnson told him he wants to be the See Strawberry emerge as the leader on this team and be the straw that stirs the drink. Got on base four times last night. Here's carry on hitting for the first time in this game looking at a strike. I still don't believe you can manufacture leaders. Guys are either leaders by example or they're not. He just wants Strawberry to get out of that mental funk that he's been in for about the last two and a half months. Check swing foul ball. Two strikes to count on carry on who's hitting 278. Maybe Johnson said that Daryl has not been playing very well in the field. He's been lackadaisical on base. He certainly hasn't hit the ball they, the way they think he should. And yet when you look down at his numbers and realize he still is at 27 home runs and 69 RBIs, you know what type of potential this man has to live up to year after year. A ball, two strikes. That's been the story on Strawberry almost from the day he emerged in the National League. Great potential, but he could do more. One and two the count. This went down and in. Of course, the Mets, now that Keith Hernandez is healthy enough to play, hope to get some kind of lift from him. But Johnson feels the bottom line is they've got to get a big lift from Strawberry. Carry on chops it through the middle and he's on the third hit of the ball game for New York. Bobbled by Walton but carry on hangs on at first. The Mets have four free agents. Carter and Hernandez probably the biggest names along with Tim Tuffle. I don't know what they're going to do as far as the contracts are concerned, but they've only got Daryl Strawberry under contract for one more year. And they're concerned that if they get on him too hard and have a lot of bad press associated with Daryl Strawberry and some of his uh, lackadaisical play, then he might not sign a contract with them, and they really can't afford that because, as Dave Johnson said about their minor leagues, they just don't have a lot of position players ready to go for the next year or two. Hernandez reached on an error his first time. Runners going on the hit and run, and Hernandez fouls it out of play. Arion returns to first. Here's the New York manager, Dave Johnson. He's been imaginative with his lineups this year, 103 total for the year so far. A strike on Hernandez, now 35 years old. Took a little something off and has the jump on the veteran first baseman. 
Mark Carrion hasn't exactly been an overnight success. He signed in 1981 and he made stops at rookie ball, a couple of stops at A ball, double and triple A, and bounced between double and triple A a couple of years. Finally made it to the major leagues in 87 briefly and last year. A ball, two strikes. Snap throw to first, carry on back in. Hernandez says that knee is still bothering him. He shattered the kneecap, was gone for two and a half months, played four games at St. Lucie, and A-ball did not hit the ball particularly well down there. And he feels he's going through his spring training right now. September's a bad time to do that. The Cardinals have scored a run in the bottom of the ninth. They're still hitting, trailing six to two. The count on Hernandez goes out to two balls, two strikes. The Cardinals are... Wondering what the condition of Todd Worrell will be. He'll be examined by Dr. Frank Job tomorrow. So they're not sure if he'll be available or not. 2-2 two, two the count. Again, carry on back in. And while the determination on surgery is made for Todd Worrell, Damon Berryhill will undergo surgery on his right shoulder tomorrow. We'll let you know the results of the surgical procedure. Hopefully, Damon will be okay and ready to go for spring training. A 2-2 count on Hernandez. Again, a toss to first. Carry on open with a base hit. He entered the game in the top of this inning in left field, replacing McReynolds, who left with a bruised left wrist. 2-2. You would think he would start carry on in this situation. He's got a man who doesn't run particularly well when he's healthy and he's not healthy now. And last time up Hernandez bounded a double play ground ball to Mark Grace. It would have ended the inning but Mark couldn't feel it. And we have a full count. Now you'd expect him to go for sure. Carrion does not have the great speed. He's only tried three stolen bases been successful one time. And Dave Johnson is not the most aggressive manager in the world. He's got a great runner in Howard Johnson, a very good runner in Samuel. Let's see what he does with carry -out. Pico, a look over there. carry -out looked as if he was all set to go. Nobody out. Runner is going, and the pitch is looped down the left field side. That's going to be out of the reach of McClendon. All the way to the wall for extra bases. Carrion's going to score on the double to left by Hernandez. The New York Mets started the base runner, and Hernandez doubles him home. The eighth double for Hernandez, his 17th run batted in. He went the other way. 2-0 New York. Nothing that Lloyd McClendon can do with this. It's hit pretty well and slicing away from him. And Dave Johnson gambled, and it paid off with a run. The runner going, he scores easily. And Jeff Pico in some trouble in the bullpen up and going. Kilgus was up earlier, and it looks like he's going to be up again. Gary Carter is the hitter. Carter grounded to short his first time. Veteran catcher came into the game hitting 174. He's made 12 starts. Carter has since coming off the disabled list, including the one tonight, and he takes a ball. Pico touched for a run in the first and another run here in the fourth inning. Hernandez. For the lead. Carter fouls it back. That was a dangerous pitch right there, and Carter fouled it away. In Gary's younger days, he was able to hit the ball consistently to right field when he had to. He was a man that used to hit and run quite a bit. And he's in a situation here where the Mets could use at least a ground ball to the right side. So let's see if Carter still has that ability. Go. 
bases outside. Two and one. Pico making his fifth start of the year. He didn't know he was going to start until a couple hours before the game when Dick Cole, the cup pitching coach, told him. He made two appearances in the Atlanta series, pitching two and a third innings on Sunday. And he pitched two and two thirds on Friday in Atlanta. Run home, nobody out. Carter at the plate. I think everybody felt that Steve Wilson was going to pick up this start. Don Zimmer surprised everyone. I think he's got to question the endurance of Jeff Pico at this point. The end of the dirt. I nice stopped by Rona. And the count is three and one. You know, he will have thrown now for the third time in five days. And although middle relievers are used to some work, it's a lot to ask a man to come in for two plus innings, then two plus innings, and then a start. There it is. It's a final in St. Louis. The Expos have beaten the Cardinals six to two. And Pico throws Carter a strike to run the count to three two. Well Pico said he had a little stiffness yesterday. Not a great deal and he did do a little throwing in the outfield. Just a little surprised at this particular choice. Full count. He said earlier this year when he made that surprise start on the road in Pittsburgh. He said he didn't know until he got to the ballpark. He said he'd skip breakfast that day, found himself loading up on donuts in a hurry <laughs> so he could go out there and make the start. 3 2 ground ball, Salazar, nice play. Wide throw, but Grace finds the bag. Out at first and holding it second is Hernandez. I think Dunstan hurt himself because Sean Dunstan took a dive into the hole. He thought that ball was getting by Salazar. Shaken up a little bit on the dive, he's going to walk it off. Take this another look at this. Fine Watch. play by Salazar. And you can see Dunstan behind him. Watch Sean. The invisible ball. Clearly Salazar had it, made the play. Sean's diving all over the infield in front of the home folks. I tell you, Dunstan's diving all over the infield and tracking down pop flies all over left and left center and a foul ground. Got to make a gold adjustment, actually. It's a game of constant adjustments. I keep telling you that. Here's Kevin Elster. Hernandez still at second. One out. Elster is shot to third. Salazar up with this one. Out first, and Hernandez dives back in at second base. Hernandez wasn't taking any chances. He went diving back into second as Salazar makes a nice play on a sharply hit ball by Elster and Don Zimmer is on his way to the mound. Jeff Pico is getting hit pretty hard. Salazar has made two fine plays and Zim out to talk with him. I think he wants to find out just exactly how he's feeling. You know Salazar made an error in Atlanta but this man can play third base. There's no doubt about that. And you're going to like him more and more the more you see him. He's made a couple of very tough plays this inning. Don Zimmer wanted to know how Pico's feeling out there. And Jeff assures him that he feels all right before he faces Sid Fernandez. Don Zimmer has said from the beginning he doesn't want 85 or 90 percent out of pitchers. When he asks them how they feel, if they don't tell him 100 percent, he takes them out. If they don't say they feel good before they're going to start, he doesn't start them. That's the way he does things. But if he does send them to the mound, he doesn't want any excuses for their performance. Fernandez at second. Fernandez at the plate. He has nine hits this year. Sent a fly ball to center his first time. Strike one. Five runs batted in for Sid Fernandez. Carry on single. Hernandez doubled him home. Clinton up for the ball, the throw to the plate. We're going to have a play, and he is out at the plate. McClendon throws out Keith Hernandez on the 
base hit to left by Sid Fernandez. Score is seven to two, and that retires the side as Lloyd McClendon guns down Hernandez. A run, three hits, one left, two four, two nothing, New York. It's a two nothing ball game, only because Lloyd McClendon was able to cut down Keith Hernandez at the plate to end the fourth inning on this play. Sam Perlazzo decided to gamble. It's not a good gamble because you know with a pitcher up, the left fielder is going to be close. Keith Hernandez is running very slowly these days, and he tries to swat the ball out of the glove of Rick Rona. It doesn't do it. Lloyd McClendon takes a strike to start the fifth. McClendon, Salazar, and Dunstan for the Cubs against Sid Fernandez. When McClendon had that ball, Fernandez with one step by third base. He had no chance. Lloyd goes the other way to right field, but Strawberry makes the catch. So McClendon, who had gone out pitcher first on an off-speed pitch, his first time up goes the other way and flies to right this time, bringing up Luis Salazar. Nobody up in the bullpen. And that's somewhat surprising. And the Jeff Pico getting hit fairly hard at this point. And if the Cubs get something going, they most certainly have to go to the bench. Salazar lined a single into center field in the second inning, the only Cub hit so far. Fernandez leaves it upstairs. Ball one. Six to two. The Expos have beaten the Cardinals. Two nothing to count. There's the left-hander, Sid Fernandez. He had dropped a little weight about a year ago. Two years ago, he was very heavy and had some back problems. There's the strike. It's two and one. Ten and three this year. Liner into left. That's going to fall for a base hit. Carry on up with it as Salazar is two for two. I think it shows you the respect of Sid Fernandez for Luis Salazar. The first two pitches from a fastball pitcher were both straight changes. Then when he fell behind, he had to come to him with a couple of fastballs, and Salazar roped that one to left. So he's the only man that's been able to solve Sid Fernandez tonight. Sean Dunstan jumped on the first pitch in the second inning and hit a fly ball to center. Sean came in batting 270. Scratch hit last night to drive in a run. Takes a strike. Comes want to make sure he doesn't get over anxious and start widening that strike zone again. That's exactly what Don Zimmer was talking to Sean about on the bench last night, trying to calm him down. He always gets psyched up in New York in front of the home folks. And he's been swinging at some terrible pitches in this series. He takes this one into right center field. That's in there for a base hit. Cut off by Strawberry, but extra bases on the way. Over to third goes Salazar, and it's a double for Dunstan. Sean takes the ball the other way into right center field to pick up his 18th double of the year. Take a look at the pitch. This is a high straight change, and for some reason, Sid Fernandez losing a little confidence in his fastball. He buried his fastball in on the hands of the Cubs for four innings, and now he's starting to go to the change. That ball high and out of the strike zone, and Dunstan went right with it and hit it in a good spot. Daryl Strawberry hustling on this play, finally rights himself and gets the ball back in, but cannot stop Dunstan from moving into scoring position. Runners at second and third with one out for Rick Rona. Rona had a big hit in the third inning last night, driving in a couple runs. 0 for 1 tonight. He fouls it back. He took a big cut and a pinch up. He drove the ball right back through the middle. Last night when he singled into center, chasing home a couple runs, six out of 14 against the Mets. Mitch Webster in the on-deck circle, and now we are getting some activity in the bullpen. Oh, on the count. Kilgus had been throwing last inning. The 
this one. And he's behind two strikes. Two to nothing, New York leading. The Mets scored a run in the first and added one in the fourth. And now the Cubs have their first scoring opportunity of the night in the fifth with two men in scoring position. If you're a hitter in this situation, you have to forget about the long swing and just try to make some contact. The Mets are conceding the run if it's hit to either shortstop or second base. Elster and Jeffries are back. Rona fell behind last night, 0 2, and then worked to count to 3 2 before he singled into center. Down again here, nothing in two. Him out. That's exactly what you didn't want to see. The big swing. Rona completely fooled. And Fernandez got a big strike out there. Now with two gone, Webster will be the pinch hitter. As Pico is lifted after working four innings tonight and allowing two runs. Webster hitting 248, two for 24 with three RBIs as a pinch hitter. He's hitting from his best side, hitting 322 as a right hand hitter. Salazar third, Dunstan at second. Webster pounds it out of play for a strike. McClendon flied out to right, and then Salazar lined a single into left, and Dunstan took one into right center for a double. Rona has struck out. Now it's up to Webster. This one is high. The count is one and one and we'll pause for station identification. This is WGN Television, Channel 9 in Chicago. One one to count on Mitch Webster. Strike on the outside corner. Webster's last pinch hit came on July the 9th against the Dodgers when he singled home two runs. His other pinch hit this year came off his present teammate Paul Ossenmacher at the end of May when Ossenmacher was still with Atlanta. He's trying to get to Fernandez but he's behind in the count. And a foul ball again out of play. Best arm in the outfield belongs to Daryl Strawberry, but he takes some time to deliver the ball. It is doubtful on any base hit that they'll be able to cut down Sean Dunstan trying to score. There are the Cub runners, second and third. Two gone. Speed and a ground ball to second. Jeffries up and a throw to first in time. Jeffries to Hernandez. No runs, two hits, two left. Bottom of the fifth coming. It's still 2 0 New York. Bottom of the fifth inning from Shea Stadium, New York. 2 0 Mets out in front. Jeff Pico lifted for the pinch hitter after working four innings, allowing two runs, five hits. And now left-hander Paul Kilgus takes over. As you look at Dwight Gooden, just about a week away from seeing some action. Paul Kilgus, just a couple of minutes away from seeing some action. He's six and ten. 459 ERA on for the 30th time. He's made 20 starts. 121 and two-thirds innings, giving up 138 hits. Six home runs. He's walked 42, fan 45. And he'll be facing the top of the batting order, Jeffrey Samuel and Johnson. There's Davey Johnson. Speaking of Gooden, he threw a simulated game today and is supposed to have the examination of his shoulder tomorrow with the magnetic resonance imaging process. And then perhaps though another simulated game on Friday, although it's not out of the question, he could see some action for the Mets this weekend. It would be out of the bullpen an inning or two at a time. They certainly could use him. And here's Jeffries. Ball one. The 
The Mets are on a seven game homestand. The Cardinals will be coming in following the Cubs and then Pittsburgh. Foul ball out of play. 1 1 the count. Jeffries has been a little better hitter from the right side, hitting 258 as opposed to 239 as a left hand hitter. Power evenly divided, two home runs from each side. You could see there a moment ago, 352 over his last 17 games. All of that from the leadoff spot. 1 1 to count. Firecracker went off, and that broke the concentration of Greg Jeffries. Was going to bump the ball, but takes it down. Two and one. I asked Davey Johnson something interesting about managing. I asked him when he felt that he could manage at the major league level. He said, You have to take into consideration something else here in New York. Foul ball, that evens the count. He said, Managing is one thing. Then you have to handle the personalities, you have to deal with high salaried guys and guys who aren't even getting on the field making eight hundred thousand dollars a year he said but the media in New York is something you never experience anywhere else he said it's absolutely unbelievable the public relations aspect of his job Jeffrey is out on strike so Kilgus fans the first man he faces well more more that's a reality of that job certainly true here in New York multiplied I pick a number. Well, he also says that he's won as an organization more games than anybody else in the last five years. As you look at Jeffries again, swinging at a bad ball. But Davey Johnson said it's not good enough. You have got to win immediately. Samuel, Juan Samuel takes ball one high. And if you don't, they put a lot of pressure on you everywhere. Jeffries has struck out to open the inning. Samuel chases one out of the strike zone. Well, the general thinking on Samuel continues to be if you get ahead, never throw this guy a strike. And sometimes, more often than not, you might get ahead without throwing him a strike to begin with. I think Kilgis is finding that out. The count is two and one. Davey Johnson continues to be his biggest defender, largely because he had. A great deal to do with this trade as you look at some consistency, but not necessarily the kind you'd like. The foul ball. Yeah, it was Johnson who kept pushing for the trade for the Mets to get Samuel, which sent Lenny Dykstra and Roger McDowell to the Phillies. And it'll be interesting to see how it works out because while Samuel is a gifted athlete, there's never been any question about that. You would think that. Dykstra gives you more of a multifaceted player. You can do more things with him. That's into the dugout. You see Grace and Rona. Great effort on the part of the Cub first baseman and the catcher. But no play on that one, and the count is still two and two. Let's watch it again. You know you're not going to get any help over by the dugout. And both players come sliding in. Both come up a little short. So the count on Samuel remains 2 2. Dykstra, for an example, gives you an opportunity maybe to do a little more bunting and a little more hitting and running than Samuel. And Samuel, on the other side of the coin, may be more of a downright impact player in terms of power and speed and raw athletic ability. And that's what the Mets were looking for when they made that deal somebody to come in and give them a big boost. Well, they haven't gotten that yet. There's ball three, three and two. They believe that Samuel's going to hit between 25 and 30 home runs, and they feel that he'll do it probably next year. Because coming over into this media fishbowl is certainly a place where you leave a team at the bottom coming to a pennant race. You try just a little harder. And I think you have a tendency to substantiate or try to substantiate the trade the faith the team has shown in you. Samuel out on strikes. Two gone. Well, one thing you know about Samuel, he's going to give you a great effort. There's not anybody in the game, I think, who won't agree with that. But he's going to have a lot of pressure here in New York, especially if he continues to do that. Now here's Howard Johnson. Johnson 0 for 2. Batting right-handed this time with Kilgus on the mound. 
Johnson, only 28 years old, 32 home runs and 85 runs batted in. Strike. Six of Johnson's home runs have come from the right side, so he doesn't have quite as much pop as he does from the left side. He fouls this one back. I'll tell you, Johnson, who a few years ago passed his stockbroker's exam, has certainly seen his stock soar in the eyes of the New York Mets. His name constantly came up in trade conversation. And they're happy now that they never included him in any trade that was ever proposed. He looked Vice President Al Harrison in the eye when he signed him to the long-term contract, and he said, you won't be sorry. And they certainly haven't been. A ball, two strikes. He's never driven in 100 runs. He has his eye on that plateau this year. The year before last, he drove in 99 when he had 36 home runs. A ball, two strikes. Two nothing, New York leading. The count evens. The Expos beat the Cardinals six to two. Base is empty. 2-2 on Johnson. Now we go all the way to 3-2. and two. While the Mets are home for seven games, the Cubs are on this seven-game road trip. They have two left after this one. Two down in Philadelphia. Strikeouts in the inning of Jeffries and Sam Well. Now the walk to Johnson and Daryl Strawberry becomes the hitter for the Mets. Strawberry has walked. He was walked intentionally in the first and called out on strikes in the third. Here's Greg Maddox. He'll be doing the pitching tomorrow for the Cubs to open the two game set against the Phillies. Ball one to Strawberry. Bruce Ruffin will pinch for Philadelphia tomorrow. You have to be careful you don't leave a fastball out over the plate where Strawberry can get his arms out because that's the ball he drives straight over the center field wall. You can jam him. Get inside right about belt high with that fastball. Two and zero. Oh. Paul Kilgus worked two innings on Sunday. Like the starter for the Cubs tonight, Jeff Pico, worked in two of the Atlanta games. He worked four innings in relief of Steve Wilson on Friday. In his first inning in relief tonight, Rona is on his way to the mound. He knows this is one of the bigger pitches of the ball game, and he doesn't want Kilgus to get careless. Got a guy at bat that's averaged right around 32 home runs a year since he stepped into this league. He's knocking at the door again with 27. Two outs. Johnson at first. Then Strawberry is ahead on the count. Two and oh. Hot shot foul. Two and one. The Mets, who scored three runs last night in the Cubs' victory, 7-3, to three, have been struggling to score runs. For the last couple of weeks, they've averaged less than three runs a game. They have two tonight. The Cubs have nothing against Sid Fernandez. Three balls and a strike. Mark Carrion is on deck. It's hard to believe when you look up and down this Mets lineup that they would ever have trouble scoring runs. But that's been the case. It hasn't been a problem getting the hits. They just haven't gotten the big hits of late. And a foul ball down the right side. So we have a full count. New York 
Hart scored in the first. And a sacrifice fly to center by Kevin McReynolds. A fly ball to short center. And Jeffrey scored when Walton took a few steps getting rid of the ball. And Hernandez doubled home carry on in the fourth for the other run. Now we're in the fifth. Man at first with two outs and a 3-2 count on Strawberry. So Johnson will be breaking with a pitch. And Strawberry's out on strikes. Got him with a slow stop to retire the side. No runs to walk one left and at the end of five, two nothing New York. Move into the sixth inning. Two to nothing. New York leading. And the Cubs have the top of the order. Jerome Walton, Ryan Sandberg, and Mark Grace to hit against Sid Fernandez, who's given up only three hits so far. Two belong to Luis Salazar, two singles, and a double by Dunstan. You get the feeling if you can just stay in the ball game, eventually Sid Fernandez is going to weaken. He's had a history of that with only three complete games, so hopefully the Cubs can peck away. Maybe the pick one up here. Cubs beat him three times last year. And the pitch to Walton is upstairs. Walton, one hit in the series. Johnson, a step in front of the bag at third. Hernandez even with a bag at first. Fly ball, right field. Strawberry, one out. One guard in the sixth for Ryan Sandberg. Ryan belted a home run in the first inning last night, his 27th of the year, to tie him with Darrell Strawberry for fifth in the league. Made a bid for a home run in the first inning tonight that sent McReynolds back to the wall. McReynolds made a leaping catch and then bruised his left wrist on the top of the wall. Eventually had to leave the game in favor of Mark Carrion who figured in the second New York run in the fourth inning. Ryan popped to short in the fourth, 0 for 2. And a strike call. There's no doubt that Gary Carter calls the best game in this ball club. Dave Johnson figures that he handles pitchers better than anybody, but he just hasn't been able to hit too much for him. Started it outside and caught the corner. Nothing in two. Including this one, the Cubs have 25 games left. Three with the Mets, again, including this game. And then six left with Montreal and six with St. Louis. Ground ball, fair ball, up the line. Extra bases for Sandberg. Carry on, makes the pick up, and Sandberg's going to get two. That's his 21st double. And for the Cubs, hit number four. Here's a question of the waste pitch winding up in the outfield. 0-2, well ahead of Sandberg with the breaking ball and decides to sneak the fastball by him inside. Doesn't work out very well for Sid Fernandez. But the Cubs like to see that ball rattling around in the corner. Mark Grace is up there. Grace has gone the other way twice, including Sending the left fielder carry on back to the warning track to catch a fly ball in left center field in the fourth inning. And fouls it out of play for a strike. Grace tripled in two runs in the ninth inning last night to extend the Cub lead in the seven to three win. Shortens on the bat, takes the pitch for a ball. One and one. Andre Dawson is on deck. Odds are Mark Grace will hit Sid Fernandez the other way. So Howard Johnson is close to the line at third, trying to take away the double that way, and there is a gap between Johnson and Elster. And this bounce foul. The count is one and two. He got away with a hanging breaking ball that time in the eyes of Mark Grayson on the inner portion of the plate. Sandberg back in at second. Picking up a one-out double. Comes 
nine and six against the Mets. Three and five here at Shea Stadium. There's a drive back into right. Strawberry back to make the catch. The tag by Sandberg. He's on his way to third and will be there with two guards. Grace with a fly ball to right. He just missed that one. You could tell the contact wasn't quite as solid as he'd like, but he had a good pitch to hit. Daryl Strawberry coasting back to make the play. So the Cubs have a man at third. Two outs for Andre Dawson, who has struck out twice tonight. Twice he's fanned on high fastball. Sid has thrown the ball right by him. Now we'll see if Sid has as much on his fastball at this point of the game as he did early because he just overmatched Dawson the first two times. There might be a mile or two an hour off the fastball in the sixth inning. The thing that makes Fernandez so effective with that pitch up. He gets movement up there. Starts him down and away for a ball. Fernandez has 154 strikeouts and right at 180 innings. He's given up just four hits tonight and 132 hits all year at 180 innings. This one foul out of play and the count is a ball and a strike. The big number that keeps jumping out at you is the number 19. The number of home runs Sid Fernandez has given up this year, and he's done it because of high fastballs. And if Andre can get the head of the bat through the strike zone quickly enough, he doesn't need a real hard swing because this man throws 90 plus. One one the count. enough to hit it foul very close down the line but it is a foul ball called by Jerry Crawford Fernandez got the fastball up and he is a very fortunate young man so Dawson returns to the plate for the count of ball and two strikes Don Zimmer can only think of what might have been on that one and it been fair but it was foul and now the counts one and two Sandberg on third. Cubs looking for their first run. Ground ball, Elster, backhanded stop, long throw, not in time, run scores. And the Cubs are on the board. It's a two to one ball game. Elster backhanded it, but had no play actually. And the Cubs are on the scoreboard. Sandberg receiving congratulations as he arrives in the Cub dugout. RBI number 64, and it's the off-speed breaking ball. After you pound a guy's fastball, you figure he's going to something else, and Andre Dawson kept the hands back and was able to beat it out as the throw was off the mark. So the Cubs cut the lead in half, and Sid Fernandez not near as effective this inning as he was the previous five. And here's Lloyd McClendon. McClendon. Nothing out of two. He was out in front back in the second inning and actually hit a chopper back to the mound. He hit it off the end of the bat. And a fly ball to right in the fifth inning. Dawson back in. So Andre Dawson on the infield hit drives in the run. The fifth Cub hit. It's now two to one New York. Fernandez starts McClendon with a slow stuff for a strike. Sid Fernandez used to be very easy to steal against because he used a high leg kick regardless of where the man was on the bases. But 
Now he's gone to a very short leg kick. However, Carter does not throw the ball very well at this point of his career. And a strike call to the knees. And even with that low leg kick, he still takes a little time unloading the ball. He's got a little hitch in that motion. And so he doesn't bring the foot up, but he does cock his arm, and that gives the base runner another step or two. This is one of the easier combinations on the Mets ball club to run against. Two strikes the count on McClendon. Dawson, the Cub runner. A pitch out. Mets doing some guessing. The Cubs are 13 out of 14 running against New York this year. McClendon at the plate. Andre back in. Austin with only seven stolen bases this year and caught four times. McClendon fouls it out of play. Mets with a run in the first and a run in the fourth inning. The Cubs have one in the sixth. Bullpen up and going for the Mets. Nobody knows better than Dave Don Johnson the history of Sid Fernandez. Don Asi up and throwing. One ball, two strikes. Now we go to two and two. Lloyd McClendon starting in left tonight with the left hander on the mound. McClendon came into the game hitting 371 against left handers. And he takes one close for ball three. Full count, and this will give Dawson a couple extra steps at first base. He'll be breaking with this 3 2 pitch. Keith Hernandez has already told Sid Fernandez that he's going to play in back of Dawson. So be careful if he decides to come over there. There's not going to be anybody there. Dawson breaks the 3 2, popped up right side. Jeffries near the line makes the catch, and that retires the side. But the Cubs get a run on two hits and leave one. Bottom of the sixth inning coming, 2 to 1, New York. Looking at Sid Fernandez, he's given the Cubs a run on five hits through six innings. And we go into the New York half to six with Mark Carrion leading off against Paul Kilgus, who throws a strike. Carrion entered the game when McReynolds left because of a bruised left wrist. Carrion singled and scored in the fourth. Ground ball through the middle, backhanded by Sandberg, and the throw will not arrive in time. Another hit for Carrion, who is two for two as a late entry into this ball game. That went right back up the middle. And Ryan Sandberg did an outstanding effort to get to this ball, but couldn't get it. Kilgus deflected the ball. That held it up enough for Sandberg to get to it. And the bouncing throw a little late. So this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. A publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. Keith Hernandez at the plate throw to first, carry on back in. Hernandez double back in the fourth inning and that chased home the second run right now that's the difference in this game they might decide to go to the hit and run in this sequence once again carry on back in Hernandez a good man to do that with came into the game at 235 250 against the Cubs Keith always takes batting practice in tennis shoes. He has bad ankles. He said it takes a little pressure off him and of course goes to the spikes during the game. Kilgus paying a lot of attention to carry on. And despite the fact that batting gloves are the vogue in this day and age, Hernandez has never worn them. He said he can't feel the bat. It just doesn't feel right to him. 
It must have paid off because he was a co-MVP with Willie Stargell in the National League two years ago. Ball one. Hernandez on that broken right kneecap. Placed on the disabled list back in May. Only the second time in his career that he's been on the disabled list. The first time was last year. keep the Mets right where they are with a feeling that in the next inning or so they might have a chance to get to Sid Fernandez. Focus again over there. Dean Wilkins loosening up in the bullpen. Carrion's getting no lead at all. Don Zimmer flashing some signs. Rick Rona looking over at Zim between every pitch. Runners going. The pitch is swing and a miss, and the throw is in time. So the Mets started the runner on the hit and run, and carry on is caught stealing. He was caught stealing by so much he decided not to slide. Rick Rona getting the ball, getting rid of the ball quickly. It's not a great throw. It's on the first base side of second, but it arrives a long time before carry on. Sean is just waiting there for him to arrive. The Mets are now three out of ten against the Cubs in that department. Ground ball, diving stop. What a stop by Grace over to Kilgus to get Hernandez. Grace makes a great play on a hard hit ball by Hernandez. He smashed that ball. Keith Hernandez, who possesses so many gold gloves himself, is used to making plays like this. But he's not used to seeing too many made against him, and Mark Grace came up with a beauty. Here's Gary Carter. Hernandez with 11 gold gloves. Grace working on his first. He's got a good shot at it this year. Carter, nothing out of two. He was retired in the fourth on a good play by Salazar. The pitch is a strike. Two outs now. Base is empty. Strike two. Gary Carter. He's struggling to stay healthy. Just a piece of that one foul. You get the feeling that if the Cubs could somehow win this ball game, they could deal the Mets, if not a death blow, certainly a terrible blow to their pennant hopes because they will lose two games. The, the Cubs will pick up a game on St. Louis, who lost to Montreal tonight, and this would be some trip into New York. And a tap back to Kilgus. Over to Grace to retire the side. No runs, one hit, nobody left. We're through six. Harry will be back in a moment. The score, New York two, Cubs one. Hello again, everybody. With Dwayne Stats and Steve Stone, Harry Carey, back at Chase Stadium as we go to the top of the seven. Salazar, who's two out of two, will lead it off. 39,000 paid here. Here's a pitch foul back. The Cubs now have drawn 2 million people on the road and 2 million people at home. Sid Fernandez has shown some signs of weakening the last couple of innings. And the Cubs trying to take advantage of it before Randy Myers gets up and starts throwing in the bullpen. Oh, and one the count. There's a high drive will be caught. Strawberry and right has it. Salazar flies out to Strawberry. That'll bring up Dunson, who doubles the right center in the fifth. That was a great chance the Cubs had with runners in second and third and one out. But Rick Rona struck out, and Webster batting for Pico grounded out. Boy, to watch Rona swinging. 
You figure he, 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 had, he hit 60 home runs a year. That's what I was saying here with two strikes. You have to shorten your stroke. And he got an off speed breaking ball and just aired it out, completely over swinging and missing it by a foot. Yeah. One out, nobody on. Two to one in favor of the Mets. Fernandez going for his 11th victory of the year. Fouls it back out of play. The Giants, who were behind eight to nothing last night, only to win at Cincinnati nine to eight, are again closing in on the Reds. They're behind six to two. Now it's six to five, and they're still batting in the eighth. Followed it back out of play. There's the American League action. Baltimore's taking the lead over Cleveland. Detroit's been red hot, and they're putting it on Kansas City once again, leading seven to one. St. Louis lost to Montreal. Fouled it out of play again. Boy, the importance of this game. If the Cubs could win it, in these two nights, it would have gained on everybody behind them. They would pick up a game on St. Louis, a game on Montreal, and two over the Mets. That's the importance of this game. 0 and 2 the count. A high top foul out of play into the stand. If the Cubs don't happen to win this game, they still will have gained. They'll still have their game and a half lead over St. Louis. And two more games would have been taken off the schedule. Only 24 after tonight's game to play. 0-2 the count. He struck him out. Hey. <laughs> was Dustin is trying to run. <laughs> and he's finally tagged out by Gary Carter. It looked like he was trying to block him off the ball here. And it looked like rugby for a second. Sean Dunstan trying to stay between Gary Carter and the ball. Not realizing that you got to go to first if you're going to run at all. Now watch this. It's a great shot. <laughs> 15 yards illegal use of the body. Well, you got to have a little fun in the game. You swing at a bad pitch, which Sean has been doing of late. Now he tries to block out Gary Carter. <laughs> he knows he can go anywhere so he just gives up two out Rona swings and he smash a foul outside third Owen won the count the tried murdering Kansas City 10 to 1 in the bottom of the six and Baltimore leading Cleveland three to one in the bottom of the seven Won the count. Strong and a miss. Strike two. Toronto beating the White Sox one to nothing the fourth. Toronto leading Baltimore by game. Austin five out. Oh and two the count. One, two, three. We go on the bottom of the seventh. Still two to one in favor of the Mets. Just a fraction of what we spend dining at. Harry Carey back at Chase Stadium as we go on to the bottom of the seventh. Kevin Elster leading it off. Nothing out of two. Paul Kilgus has pitched fine ball for two innings. Striking out three. Walking one, allowing one hit. He swings and he misses. Looking ahead to the eighth. 
It will be a pinch hitter for Kilgan. We'll have, we will go through the top of the batting order one more time. There's a strike call. We'll have a pinch hitter for Kilgus. Walton and Sandberg, Grace, Dawson, McClendon, all sure to hit before this game can be over. Oh, and two to count. There's a drive, but it's a foul ball into the stands in left field. Elster has plenty of punch. He's hit eight home runs this year. Most of them early, however, and they figured prominently in a few ball games. Kilgus throwing the ball exceptionally well. He's struck out three men in his two innings. There's a looper in the center field. It's in there for a base hit. With a pound 0 and 2. Elster single the center. Sets the stage for Sid Fernandez to lay one down. Fernandez has eight sacrifices this year, and that leads the club in that department. Now Kilgus and Mark Grace and Louis Salazar are talking things over. And Salazar's going to play very shallow at third. Else through the runner at first base, nobody up. The ball is bunted. The only play will be the first base. Sacrifice. Sandberg took the throw. Well, they have a big insurance run at second base. Pretty good bunt by Sid Fernandez, although he'd rather have bunted it to the right side, but he killed it perfectly, and Rona only had one play. Here's Greg Jeffries fanned against Kilgus in the fifth. Elster with just average speed at second base. Let's see now, there goes Rona to talk to Kilgan. Jeffrey's very fast and he likes to bunt too. Elster a lead at second base. Strike call. A slider. Infielders know at this point they've got to leave their feet on a ground ball wide of their position. You have to at least knock the ball down and keep it in the infield and save the run. Bouncing ball. Here's Dunstan throw in time. Two gone. And that brings up Juan Samuel. Two away. Sam Wells struck out against Kilgus in the fifth. He had one out of two against Pico, a double that set up their first run in the first inning. If Pico got out of a couple of jams in the first inning, he could have easily been unscored upon despite the fact that he had runners on second and third and nobody out. He threw the ball creditably well tonight, holding the Mets to just two runs and in four innings. There's a slider high, ball one. Toronto leading at Chicago two to nothing in the fourth. Baltimore leading Cleveland three to one in the eighth. Ball outside. Howard Johnson will be next. Be careful here. Three balls, two balls, no strikes. Kilgus, his third inning of relief. There's a high drive. Going to be in foul territory and out of play. In the right field corner. 
Samuel. <laughs> Elster, good lead at second base. Ball three. Three balls and the strike. Samuel will be swinging if the pitch is good. Infield very deep on the left side. And Samuel can fly down the line on a chopper. They've got no chance to get him. Three and one. Ball four. He walked him. That brings up Howard Johnson. That's a second pass given up by Kilgore. 37th time that Juan Samuel has walked this year, which is a low total for a man with his power. And that might have been one of the costlier walks because you've got to face a very difficult hitter, Howard Johnson. Johnson's 0 for 2. He walked against Kilgus in the fifth. Switch hitter batting right handed. There's a high fly ball going to be caught. McLendon in left field has it to retire the side. So at the end of seven, it's still two to one Mets. Domingo Ramos will be the pinch hitter for Paul Kilgus, who turned in three fine innings in relief. There's a pitch a little bit high, ball one. Kilgus in three innings allowed two hits, no runs, walk two, fan three. Ramos, five out of 12, is a pinch hitter. One ball, no strikes. Ball two outside. He's hitting 261 with one homer, 17 RBI. Fernandez hasn't walked anybody yet, but he has a tendency to tire in the late innings, and this could be the inning. Let's see if the Cubs are patient. Two balls, no strikes. Popped it up. Hernandez, fair territory, makes the cut. Two balls, no strikes. He couldn't, he couldn't resist, and he popped it up. One away. Here's Jerome Wall. He's nothing out of three. And Sandberg is next. Is not trying to lay one down. And Jeffries is back at second. And a little pop fly, easy out on the first pitch. Two gone here, Sandberg. He doubled and scored the only run the Cubs have made tonight. He was robbed of a home run in the first inning when Kevin McReynolds leaped high. And hauled out his drive, which was headed for a home run territory in the Cubs bullpen out there. Keith Hernandez with a word for Sid Fernandez. And he's the captain in the infield. The reason why Dave Johnson has him in there, despite his low batting average, is the fact that he will take control. Two out, nobody on. A high pop fly. That'll be easy. The short stops there to make the catch, and that retires the side. Boy, that's the easiest inning he's had. One, two, three. We go in the bottom of the eighth. Two to one Mets. Mitch Williams coming into the ball game. Let's pause here for station identification. This is WGN Television, Channel 9 in Chicago. Strawberry to lead off against Mitch Williams, who's won four, lost two, has 31 saves. 
He hasn't had a save in a long time. He hasn't been in a game this road yeah. trip, Harry, and every time he spends five days on the shelf, you wonder about his control, and that's what you have to worry about tonight. First pitch to Strawberry is high. There's a drive way back. It might be out of here. Dawson near the fence. And Walt makes the catch. In deep right center, Walton hauled down Strawberry's long drive. One out. He just got under this ball. Andre Dawson calling for it, but Jerome Walton, even though he's a first-year player, the center fielder is still the captain in the outfield, and he takes it. Here now is Mark Carrion. He's two out of two since coming into the game. He replaced Kevin McGrunnell. His first time at bat was a fourth when he singled, went to, and scored on Hernandez's double to left. And that's the difference between these two teams, that one run. All three potential pinch hitters have bats in the Cub dugout. Desenzo, Law, and Curtis Wilkerson. There's a high fly ball. Dawson is there, makes the catch. Carry on. Flies to Dawson in short right. That brings up Keith Hernandez looking ahead. In the ninth inning, Mark Grace will lead off. Andre Dawson is second. Lloyd McLennan third. And if anybody gets on, Luis Salazar, who has two of the Cub five hits. gets away from Arona. Two out, nobody on. One ball, no strikes. Keith Hernandez, veteran first baseman. There's a pitch a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes. There's a strike call. Two balls and the strike, 35 year old. Keith Hernandez, the hitter. A little bit inside, ball three. Gary Carter will be next. Two out. That makes it full. Three balls, two strikes. Pitchers of record are Sid Fernandez from the Mets, Jeff Pico for the Cup. Ball four, he walked him. The Cub relief pitchers have shut him out. They got a run off of Pico that they shouldn't have had in the first. And they had one off of Pico in the fourth. Since then, the Mets have been held to only two hits and no run. Only a fine play by Lloyd McClendon in the fourth inning saved another run. And they cut down Keith Hernandez in the plate. There's a pitch high. Gary Carter 0 for 3. As they have the ball out of the infield, roll the chart, roll the third, and tap to the mound. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. No strikes. Two out. Two to one in favor of the Mets. Ball out 
outside. Ball three. And Kevin Elster would be next. They might turn Gary Carter loose here. Strike call. Three and one. Mitch Williams. He's got to be careful to hesitate here on this stretch. He came very close last time to no hesitation. A high pump foul. Salazar cannot make a play. It's in the stand. The only home run Gary Carter has hit this year was against the Cubs. He's batting 174, one homer, seven RBI. Three out of 21 against Cub pitching this year, but one of his three hits was a homer. Cincinnati beat the Giants 6-5. Two strikes. There's a high fly ball. Dawson is there to make the catch. And at the end of eight, the Mets two, the Cubs one. Back at Shea Stadium as we go into the top of the ninth. The Cubs trailing two to one. Here's Mark Grace. Grace hit the ball very hard back in the sixth inning, sending Daryl Strawberry back to the warning track, but it fell a little short. He's 0 for 3 tonight. Had a good cut foul and back. Grace, who put the frosting on the cake last night with a two-run triple in the ninth inning. Fernandez going for his fourth complete game. He's ahead of him now on two. Dave Johnson, as if to say the game is yours, big guy, has got nobody warming up in the bullpen. Oh, and two. No, he did not. He catch dropped it. the ball. He dropped the ball. It's a double. He had it, and then the ball came out of his glove while he's lying on the grass. Boy, he came so close. Watch it. Great effort by Sam Well as he comes over to try to make a spectacular grab. Now watch what happens. The ball hits in the tip of the glove, and it comes out of the glove when he hits the grass. He tried for an Academy Award there. To make the umpire think he held it. Right there, he There's trapped it. You can see it. So, so it's a double to lead off the ninth inning. And now the bullpen up and going for the Mets. Both a right-hander and a left-hander. Left-hander is Randy Myers. All right, here is Andre Dawson. He drove in the only cub run. There's a high fly ball. Grace is going to tag up. Here he comes. Here's a long throw. He's safe. After the catch, Grace advanced to third. And now the tying run is at third with only one out. The throw was off the mark, and it had to be cut off. Daryl Strawberry thought that they were going to let that throw go through. Watch it again. He sets up. He catches it on the wrong side of his body to make this throw because he has to come across his body, and that gives the runner another couple of steps. The infield now has to come in. Lloyd McLendon is 0 for 3. Fastball high, almost a wild one. 
One ball, no strikes. Fernandez, for a guy who strikes out a lot of men, doesn't make too many wild pitches. He's only had one of them all year. Fung, and he fouled it back. A ball and a strike. Looks like Don Ossie, the right-hander, and Randy Myers, the left-hander, currently heating up in the bullpen. One ball, one strike, infield in. Outfield straight away. There's a drive in the left field. Here comes a tying run to the plate. And the game is all tied up. McClendon ties up the ball game with a sacrifice fly. Look at the Cub dugout. That's a happy bunch of guys. All tied up 2-2. RBI number 36 for Lloyd McClendon. Carry on, who doesn't have much of an arm, does make a fine catch here. This is a sinking line drive. Carry on coming on. Mark Grace tagging up. He breaks back on this ball, then realizes he's got to come get it. Very close to a trap. But Grace scores easily. And let's look at it again. He might have trapped that ball. Joe West on the call out there. And we'll take another look at it as the Cubs tie it up. We're going to show you the play again. The ball is trapped. No doubt about it. But the game is tied. And here's Salazar, who's two out of three tonight. Good fastball. Strike call. Mel Stottlemyre, the pitching coach, was out talking to Fernandez. That evens it up, a ball and a strike. 2-2 two, two tie. One ball, two strikes. Fernandez has been trying not to throw Salazar fastballs. He did it twice. Fell behind him in the fifth inning, and Salazar rifled a fastball. Two for three today, and he hits fastballs well. Two balls, two strikes. Line right to Johnson, the third baseman. Salazar lined hard to Hojo Johnson. One run, one hit. We're going to the bottom of the ninth, all tied up to two. Back at Chase Stadium. We're going to the bottom of the ninth. All tied up at two. Here's Kevin Elster, one out of three. Fastball is low. Mitch Williams in his second inning of relief. Kilga stopped him for three innings. Williams pitched the scoreless eight. Strike call. A ball and a strike. The performance by Paul Kilgus, perhaps his most important of the year, as he came on to relief of Jeff Pico and shut the door on the Mets, keeping the game alive for the Cubs to tie it up in the ninth. One ball, one strike. High pop fly, easy out. Sandberg backing out, makes the catch. Tim Tuffle is going to bat. Tuffle is hitting for Fernandez. Tuffle hitting 242 with one home run, 12 RBI. One for eight with an RBI as a pinch hitter. He hurt his hand last year, and Dave Johnson doesn't figure he's got the same power he had last season. He's a veteran player acquired from Minnesota and was a pretty good hitter last year. Did hit four home runs for the Mets. One out, nobody on. Tim Tuffle, the pitch 
swung and he missed. Tuffle has one home run this year. One out of eight is a pinch hitter. There's a high pop foul out of play. 0 oh and 2 the count. He got in some play when Greg Jeffries was set on the bench for two weeks. But he hasn't played a whole lot this year as Jeffries has taken over as an everyday second baseman. Tuffle batting 242 to pitch outside. One ball, two strikes. Looking ahead. In the 10th, we'll have the lower end of the batting order up. The pitch. There's a long drive center field. Jerome Walton is there. Makes. No, he can't hold on to the ball. Here's Tuffle holding up at second base. He got to it, but he couldn't hold on to it. Looks like a play that Jerome Walton could have made. It's to the deepest recesses of the park, straightaway center field at the 410 side. Walton looks like he's got a shot at this ball. He slows down to make the catch. And has the ball go over his glove before he hits the wall. He just misjudged that ball. Lines up two bases. Now the winning runs at second base. Jeffrey. Two two tie, but the Mets have the winning run at second with only one out. They got a pinch runner down there for Tuffle. Thornton, I believe. Quick throw back to Dunstan covering. The winning run at second, one out. Pass ball outside. Lou Thornton, number four, is running for Tuffle. A long fly ball going back is Walton makes the catch. Here's a runner tagging up at second, advancing to third. Jeffrey line to Walton. To God. And here's Samuel. The only thing scares you here is the six wild pitches this year by Mitch Williams. So Rona's going to have to be on his toes. Samuel with the runner at third. He's fast. He could beat out an infield hit. Fouls it back and out of play. San Diego with a chance to pick up a game on the Giants. Is batting in the tenth at Atlanta tied up with the Braves. it again 0 and 2 all right Mitch throw on your double in in shoot out shoot spitball curveball but get them out 0 and 2 that's it the ball game is over with a count of a, no balls two strikes Samuel wins the ball game with a single to right. And the Mets are split with the Cubs. Montreal split with the Cardinals. The Cubs split with the Mets. And we're right where, right where we were two days ago. Here's an old 2 pitch. Fastball right down, down the, the middle. middle. Juan Samuel doesn't miss many fastballs. And unfortunately, he's able to dump it right in front of Andre Dawson. with the totals in a moment.
The Budweiser play of the game is this base hit by Juan Samuel with the count. No balls, two strikes. A line single in the right field. Andre Dawson gave it his all, but there was no way of reaching the ball. That's a game-winning hit. The Budweiser play of the game. You know, they the, the Mets win this game three to two, and two of the three runs were, well, they shouldn't have had them. Unfortunately, Jerome Walton had a bad evening. He took too many steps getting a throw away and a very short sacrifice fly and then came up a little short on a ball I believe he misjudged in center field. He's had such a great year and this was a well-played game. The Cubs getting a very good performance out of the bullpen for Paul Kilgus and Harry. You came in hoping you could spend two games here and not lose any ground and that's exactly what exactly happened. Right. And the Cubs lead by a game and a half now over the St. Louis Cardinals and they are three games ahead of Montreal and three and a half ahead of the Mets exactly where they were two nights ago when we came in here to open this series and actually they game because now the, their pursuers have two less chances to catch them because they've taken two more games off the schedule. It's going to be exciting as we wind our way down here and I'll see you in Philadelphia. All right see you uh, tomorrow. Here now are the totals for the victorious New York Mets, three runs, nine hits, no error. The winner is as Sid Fernandez. He has won 11 and lost three. For the Cubs, two runs, six hits, one error. Their loser, Mitch Williams, he now has won four and lost three. A tough ball game, could have easily won it, wound up losing it, didn't lose any ground. We're still a game and a half ahead of the St. Louis Cardinals who are beaten by Montreal tonight. Well, tomorrow we'll be in Philadelphia. The Cardinals will be here in New York to face the Mets. Speaking for Dwayne Stats and Steve Stone, this is Harry Carey from Shea Stadium in New York, where the Mets edged out the Cubs three to two. See you tomorrow. So long, everybody. Stay tuned now for the news, which will follow immediately. Our next telecast will be tomorrow night at 6.30 Chicago time when the Cubs take on the Philadelphia Phillies here on Channel 9. Our executive producer, director has been Arnie Harris. The final score, the Mets 3, the Cubs 2, Harry Carey from New York. So long, everybody.